Um, hello, so today we are going to talk about data object, which are a new Kotlin construct that is planned to be released in Kotlin 1.9. Um, so that, that solves a specific problem. So let's start first find out why we need it and then see what, what, what we, how can we use it. So let's say you have um, a sealed class, right? Just a normal sealed class. But let's say we have one that sort of represents um, some sort of linked list or functional linked list, right? And so we'd have a list like this. So this is the definition. It can have any type. And then we can have a node, of course. And each node has both a value and next points to the next element, right? Um, and you could also have nil, right? Because, for example, at the, to represent the end of the the list you need to point to a nil uh, node right and so we need to represent that which should be part of the same type but um, so part of the same uh, seed class but it has a type of nothing because it has no value right so the usual way to do um, right now to do an object uh, as part of sealed uh, class or a sealed interface there is um, uh, that doesn't have any data is to use just object right um, but if we use object, what happens? Um, let's use object, but try to print uh, to print these uh, these values in a in a nice way. So first, we want to create a list like this. Okay. So how do we do that? Um, so we can just first have our append function, right? So that you can append to a list. So we'll just create one like this in a nice way where. Um, uh, where it's uh, an infix function just so that we can do something like a pen like this. Uh, this is, by the way, an example from the Kotlin keep uh, document itself. Um, but just to illustrate the need here. Um, so if we have nil, uh, so we create a, a linked list here. We start with nil, we append zero, we append one, we append 24. Um, uh, and so you can see here, by, by the way, um, when you append, with this here, we create a new node and make the previous one its next, right? So this means that this nil value will be the last one, and this append forty two would be the first element, elements, right, of the of the list. Um, but once we do this, we should have a list that has sort of like this, uh, forty two, that points to one, that points to zero, and then that points to nil, right? And so if we print it, which is reasonable to see with the content of of our list, you can see here it has 42, and then next value is 1, next value is 0, and then next value is null. But the problem here, you can see, null is actually pretty ugly uh, looking. Uh, right? You have the package name and uh, the class name, and then uh, at address to represent sort of the object, right? Um, so this is this is ugly, and the other thing is also like the the one we, the 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 one of the of the class data classes here of lists that has the the least element which is zero elements node has a value but the one that has the least one which is this one has the largest to string representation right um, and so let's say we wanted something more readable um, so we may want maybe t what's reasonable is to have something like uh, nil here. Right, just the name of the object. This would be a lot more clearer, right? Um, and you could apply this to to other things, um, to other data classes you have. Um, let's say you have a result with success and failures, and maybe uh, loading. And loading doesn't have um, any data. Maybe you don't need any data. Um, and so, if you want to print the state, and then loading would have all the name package, the package name dot loading, and then the um, um, and then the um, and then the loading class name and so that's uh, ugly string representation okay um, so how do we how do we get around this um, well right now without the data objects you can try to get around it yourself right so you could for example um, just create an empty data class manually right to sort of imitate a data class so we could do something like this with nil and then um, have a placeholder string, right? There, there is al already assigned a default value so that um, you don't need to create it each time. And so this here would be like this. Um, so we need this, of course, to extend 
a list of nothing, right? Um, and then now we should be able to use it, right? And so if we print now, because it's a data class, we have null, but then the problem is that we get the, the empty placeholder displayed with it, right? You might say, okay, let's, let's just say that value for a naked list is um, like null or something like this, okay? Um, so you see the solution is still ugly, right? It's still, what we want here is just null value, right? Just null string representation. So another way you tr you might try to solve it is like, um, the, the is like creating your own object, right? And then implementing your own to string function that just shows the simple name. Um, and so if we do it, uh, yeah, we need to just change this here and let's run it. And that sort of, this makes sense more, right? But then we, we had to define this to string and we didn't need to for data classes. And um, if we had to do this for every object, then it's, it's really cumbersome. And it's also sort of not consistent with the behavior of the data class here. So you could think of an object um, as like a, just a data, uh, an object, especially in the, in the context of an ADT here with a sealed class or a sealed interface. You can think of it as a ju just a data class with no values at all, right? Um, and so, as a result, um, it should have the two strings generated by Colin. Um, and so, yeah, basically we can think of uh, objects here as data classes with no arguments. Um, but right now, data classes do have meaningful two string representation, but um, um, objects don't, and so that's exactly what data objects aim to fix. Um, and so let's see how we can use them. So first we will need to um, change um, to use Kotlin 1.9, which has data objects. Um, and then we need to go here and use data object. And so um, uh, we'll just need to delete this one because we are no longer using it. Um, and that should be it. And now if we print the same example, you can see by default the representation makes sense. Okay. Um, one thing to mention is for data objects, copy. And, so basically for data classes, we usually generate, Kotlin generates um, a couple of functions, right? Generate copy, component n, uh, component n for destructuring. Um, generates to string of course and then generates equals and hash code um, right so for these two um, they are not generated for their objects right because they are not relevant right because why do you need to copy an, uh, an object that is just empty you can just use the object itself the other thing is component and there is there are no values to this structure here so it doesn't make sense to string it gets generated um, um, so, okay, so another thing to mention is that um, Kotlin allows uh, you to override data classes, so to override equals and override uh, and the hash code for data classes. So you could do something like override equals here. You could override um, hash code, right? And this is because um, the inner values may be um, may be different, right? Maybe uh, not. They do not work um, sometimes with the default equals implementation. What do I mean by that? So let's say you have an array of type T here, right? And make this values. Then if you just use your, the default data class implementation, then the comparison won't be uh, work properly. It will work only if you have the exact same uh, object array. Right, because it doesn't compare by the content of the array, which is what we want. And so, um, naturally, you would want in your um, equals implementation to compare actually the content of the arrays. So something like this. Okay, um, and so Kotlin gives you um, for data classes um, a way to customize your equals, and you need to do the same thing for hash codes, where you would need to do something like hash code. Right? And so it allows you to override these so that you can handle cases like this, okay? But for data object, um, it's not allowed to um, override equals and, and hash code. Let's see why. So if you try to do it like this and try to override um, these two, um, you can see both we get an error that we cannot have a custom implementation uh, for 
equals and we can't have a custom implementation for hash code so y you might say why is that well it doesn't actually it actually makes sense because we want object to act sort of as um as an immutable type right and so the equals implementation should always be the same you should always if you have two instances let's, let's say you do like this null and then this null these two should always be the same and similarly hash code should always be the same so there is no reason to to provide a custom one if um if kotlin opens that up then it just opens up um opportunity for bugs right there is uh, because there is no utility right you, you never have values here that you will need to compare um okay so that's uh, about equals and hash code um, let's see another example just to show you the the power of this because even in the future this will allow Kotlin to do more things. So let's say we have their class um, user uh, maybe has val username right now let's say this is a string then um, this is used also um, on Android because you have UI um, uh, to do things like select class for success, for loading, and for failure. But for example, here let's say we have user result. One is found, um, and then the other is not found. Okay, so maybe you are searching for it or something. Um, so with this one, we made it a data object, so the string representation will be great. Um, what w this will allow Kotlin to do is to do something like what ha something really nice and concise like Haskell does. So Haskell to represent something similar to this. So let's say um, let's say Kotlin you wanted to represent a maybe. For Kotlin if you wanted to represent a maybe you would do something like maybe, um, and then you would do just val value right. Maybe here you have a maybe of type T, and then you would have a. Uh, this is type T, and this would need to be a data class, and then you would have um, a data object for um, nothing type okay um, and you can see um, just if you compare this with with this um, with with the Haskell representation this is a lot more verbose than it needs to be right um, why don't we why aren't we able to just do something like this right this is very concise this is a lot better right and if you didn't have data objects then like this if we didn't have data object, then it would be like this. So it doesn't make sense to remove these. Um, it doesn't quite make sense to remove them because they are not the same. But if all the values that can be here um, are are written in the same way, then it makes sense to omit the um, uh, the definitions here. And so um, this is something that I think Kotlin is considering doing. Um, yeah, and even you could go further and do something like this. So where you have uh, you have it on the same line you have the found and then you have the not found um, yeah just similarly I had it like this but you could also write it like this um, so yeah that's um, something from the keep documents that um, Kotlin uh, language designers said that they are considering doing um, um, yeah so both their object solves this problem but hopefully it will allow more um, nicer Kotlin syntax as well. Um, yeah, so that's I think pretty much what I wanted to cover uh, for this video. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye!